Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. A third vaccine could be on the horizon. Right now, a meeting is underway to determine if Johnson & Johnson will get the green light for its single dose shot. And getting a look into the John Getter case, what was said in a 37 page document that outlined the ex US Olympics gymnastics coaches charges. And police in Huron Township are trying to figure out what happened after a deadly stabbing there. That story does top our news at noon. Thank you for joining us on your Friday. I'm Evron Casimi. That stabbing happened on Judd Road, about five minutes from 275 at Sibley. And the story is still, still developing at this hour. So let's go out live to our Larry Spruill. He joins us with more on what we know so far, Larry. Good afternoon, Everard. Police are really calling this a sad situation involving a son and his two parents. Now, I want to show you the very active scene or scenes, I should say. One is right across the street. The other one is at that home that you are looking at on your screen. And this afternoon, a woman is dead. Now, let's take a look at some new video just into our newsroom of the scene from earlier. You can see police roping off a wide area, blocking off portions of Judge Street here in Huron Township. Now, they said everything happened around 8 o'clock this morning when a neighbor who was an off-duty police officer called police saying there's a stabbing going on in his front yard. That's when he stepped outside and held the suspect at gunpoint. When police arrived, they said the son, who was 25 years old, got to his parents' home earlier this morning. There was some type of altercation between the son and his parents, and he attacked both of them. One inside the home, the other one across the street in the neighbor's yard. What I can tell you is that there were both gunshots and stab wounds, uh, that this was a multi-weapon incident. At this point, we're still trying to sort out exactly where their injuries are. Again, they were both transported from the scene. So they are, uh, we're both taken to local hospitals. And uh, unfortunately, the mother who is 53, she is dead this afternoon. The father who is 55, he is in a hospital. And a spokesperson for police say, says that they know both of the parents and they are very nice people. They're not releasing the identities at this time. I'll have another report coming up later on tonight on Local 4. We are live in Huron Township this afternoon. Larry Spruill. Local four. Just a complete senseless tragedy. Larry, thank you for the update there. New at noon, we are getting our first look at the swear to document in the people of the state versus John Gettert. That 37 page document outlines the 24 charges the ex U.S. Olympics gymnastics coach was facing from Attorney General Dana Nessel's office. The defendants say Gettert would routinely put them through emotional and physical abuse. One of the accusers even saying that she was forced to practice with a broken neck. Another said that Gettert told her to, quote, just go kill yourself. Gettert committed suicide at a rest stop in Clinton County yesterday, just hours after being hit with the 24 criminal charges. In the meantime, Attorney General Dana Nessel says that the investigation into Michigan State University's involvement with Larry Nasser is going nowhere. Nessel says MSU's Board of Trustees refuses to release 6,000 documents citing attorney-client privilege. Nestle tweeted, MSU's refusal to comply with my request leaves me with no choice but to close this investigation in a manner that provides no real closure or justice to the people who deserve it. A meeting is now underway to determine if Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine should get the green light from the FDA. A panel of outside experts is debating whether the single dose vaccine is safe and effective to be granted an emergency use authorization. A large scale clinical trial found the vaccine was 72% effective overall in the US, but that is less effective than Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines. But the experts noted no one who got the J and J vaccine was hospitalized or died from COVID-19. The efficacy at preventing relatively mild or even moderate disease may be different, but yet all of the vaccines seem to be uh, equally effective at preventing very severe disease, intensive care um, needs, and deaths. The independent panel will vote later today on whether or not to recommend the FDA grant emergency authorization, and then the FDA will make its decision. That's expected sometime this weekend. Johnson & Johnson says that if authorized, it will have 4 million doses ready to be shipped out immediately. Here at home now, all eligible residents in St. Clair Shores can get a COVID-19 vaccine at the Senior Center starting today through Sunday, so through the weekend. 
Anyone 65 years and older, frontline workers who live or work in Macomb County are eligible as well. And residents can sign up. All you have to do is visit the city's COVID information webpage. And Wayne County now continuing to hold clinics to get everyone eligible vaccinated. So if you are 65 and older there, you can make an appointment at the clinic that's closest to you. So far, the state has actually hit a milestone with more than 2 million doses administered. We have all the information for you if you'd like to get signed up to get your vaccine and you're eligible on our website. Just go to clickondetroit.com for that. Now we want to take a look at the latest COVID numbers. State officials reporting more than 1300 new cases of the virus, along with 48 more deaths. Although 30 of those are coming from a review of past records. Meanwhile, the city of Detroit is confirming a COVID-19 outbreak at the Whole Foods in Midtown. So far, 23 employees have tested positive there, but that number could increase with the store doing more rapid testing. Whole Foods did close early Tuesday evening. They did a deep cleaning and then they reopened on Wednesday morning. Employees who tested positive will not be allowed back in the store to work until they have tested negative. And Whole Foods did release a statement that reads in part, we address any confirmed diagnosis in our stores with a, a comprehensive action plan that includes enhanced cleaning and contact tracing, as well as communicating directly with our team members. Well, as we head into the weekend on your Friday afternoon, we do want to keep you updated on your weekend forecast. And meteorologist Brandon Rue has a, a preview of what is to come. We started the morning out a little chillier than what we've seen in mornings past uh, in this week, Brandon. Flirting with uh, single digits in some spots early, Evrod, and the sun really helping. Now, we did get a little wave of some high clouds across portions of our metro and south zones, but we thought we'd be cloud free. Don't worry, they're going away very quickly. 35 right now, Detroit, 35, Ann Arbor, it's 36 in Port Huron, where they're not seeing much in the way of clouds. We will see more and more sun building back in for your finally Friday afternoon. 39 at 2 p.m., 42 degrees. Our afternoon high temperature, south southeast winds 5 to 10, 5 to 12 ish. As you look across our south zone and into Wayne County, you can see that these clouds are almost done. They're debris clouds, dirty clouds from a system to our south. But we have the shampoo in the way of the sun. As we look at a quick little headline here, we're tracking a little Saturday ice and Sunday rain. It is not a weekend washout and flirting with 50 both days. So Evrod will break it all down coming up for the big weekend and beyond. Listen, we are excited for that. You said flirting with 50. We are here for it. Brandon, we'll see you in just a little bit. Uh, we do want to let you know about some major construction if you are planning on using I-75 or even I-94 this weekend. Uh, let's start with I-75 because both north and southbound sides of I-75 are going to be closed between 696 and 8 Mile Road. That's going to start late tonight at 11. And crews are demolishing a bridge as part of the modernization project that they've been working on. To get around that, just use Woodward Avenue as an alternate route. And then moving over to I-94, east and westbound lanes are going to close from I-75 to Connor on the east side tonight at 9 o'clock. And you can use Gratiot as an alternate route there. Both freeways are scheduled to reopen Monday morning at 5, so you certainly have been warned. A lot of construction happening there. Still ahead here at noon, a massive fire breaks out in California, and the image is, well, it's heartbreaking. And we'll tell you where it happened and how far the smoke can be seen when we come back. But first, President Biden showing the U.S.'s might. Up next, what we learned about the airstrike on militias in Syria.